guys, you could be watching. I'm back with another video, guys. And today, we're going to be talking about the most recent installment in the Fast and Furious franchise, The Fate of the Furious. So, guys, The Fate of the Furious was released about a week ago, and this review is late. I did see it, basically, when it came out. But this review is a little late. But, you know, let's just jump right into the review. So, guys, The Fast and the Furious is a franchise that started back in 2001, I want to say, with the original The Fast and the Furious. And, basically, it was more of a street... <laughs> grounded movie. The films have tra changed so drastically over the past like 15, 16 years now that it's like different. Uh, the first one was basically like Point Break with Cars where it was like uh, grounded street racing kind of almost a crime movie whereas number two and three kind of followed with that. And then we got to four where it was still grounded but it was getting a little more action and then we get five, six, and seven which are blockbuster action movies that make a lot of money. So, did the 8th movie follow the original format, or did it stay with the current trend, and it stayed with the current trend? So, sadly, after the passing of Paul Walker, we have, uh, um, um, back to, like, it's a little bit more of both, I would say. I remember one of his things, he wished that it would go back kind of with the street racing, and I did see that because the opening act of this movie does have, it contain a big street race, and the movie does feel a little more, like, car, kind of like car related than Fast and well, Furious 7 did, where that was more of like an action movie, where they did use a lot of car stunts, and possibly the big, biggest car stunt of all movie history, when they drove the car through the buildings, but this one definitely felt more Fast and Furious-like, in my opinion. So, I really do like the Fast and Furious movies, I think the original is great. Um, 2 and 3 are okay, and 4 is not that great. 5, 6, and 7 I think are really good, I think 5 is my favorite, then 1... Then six, and then not counting this one, then probably like four, and then two, then three. I forgot seven, but whatever, it goes in the middle of there. So, yeah, so seven wasn't my favorite, but I thought it was a decent action movie. Pretty good. And yeah, so we're coming off of this, and like I said, sadly, Paul Walker's not in this movie. So, yeah, we definitely do miss his character and his presence in the movie. But does that really take away from the experience? No, because they really worked around it, and they gave him such a great send-off at the end of Fury 7. He is name-dropped, like, once or twice in this movie about maybe they should go to him, but as Letty reminds the whole cast, yeah, that's, like, kind of off. No, like, Don wouldn't want that. So, yeah. So, basically, the plot of this movie is that uh, everybody's kind of living their life, like, after Fury 7. They're basically, they're citizens, they're allowed back in the country. Everybody's happy, and basically, Dom and Letty are, like, married, and they're in Cuba, uh, and it was cool because we haven't really seen a movie film there, and basically street racing, and then we meet the villain, Cypher, and to be honest, I thought she was okay, so basically her villain, she's a very cyber-oriented villain, like technology, felt like a really good James Bond villain, and basically she's kind of been like, kind of like the uh, Spectre when it comes to James Bond, where she's the one that's really been like behind, like especially with the newer Daniel Craig trilogy, she was the one that was like, the benefactor behind our recent villains in Fast and Furious 5, 6, and 7. So, yeah, they've came they've come across our organization, but not really her herself. So, basically, if she gets some sort of leverage, which is revealed later in the movie. I won't reveal this because that's not a spoiler review. But um, she gets some... Uh, actually, maybe I'll do I'll make this a spoiler review. So, spoiler alert if you're still watching. So, yeah, she gets some leverage, which I'll reveal later on Dom. That forces him into a life of crime and betrayal. So, basically, they're on a mission. He betrays the team... And, yeah, that's basically our plot. They're going at the dumb. But there's also other stuff going on. Now, this was probably the most largest scale of any Fast and Furious movie, in my opinion. They go throughout the whole globe. Um, I think we're in... We go to New York, which is cool, because it's the first time a Fast and Furious movie has been in New York. And New York is not filmed for a lot of, like, street racing stuff, so that was really cool. We obviously, like I said, have the other locations I talked about. We're on this, like, big ice, like, arena-like thing, which is awesome. And, yeah. The CGI was really awesome in this movie. Obviously, it has a big budget. The CGI should be good. So, um, with all these Fast and Furious movies, the main focus is family. And I know this one was kind of different, and then I really liked it. Most movies, we got our family, Dom's crew, going up against a villain. And that's basically it. We might lose a member, gain a member, lose a couple members, lose every... No, I'm kidding, but... Um, we might lose a member, gain a member, or possibly even just keep it the way it was. But with this movie, I really liked the fact that it was different. Where they were going up against Dom, which was more of a personal threat. A lot of the beginning and the second act of the film is debating on whether did he actually turn against the team. Or is he actually pulling like a 360 on the villain. 
So one thing I gotta love about these movies is the chemistry chemistry between all the characters. So obviously our main group of characters consists of Vin Diesel, who plays like the main like leader as Dominic Toretto. We have the Rock Hobbs, who's introduced in Fast and Furious. Was it five? Was it Fast and Furious Five? I think. I think it was Fast Five. Maybe it might have been Fast and Furious, but I think it was Fast Five. We have uh, him. We obviously have Letty, who is Dom's romantic interest in the story. We have Ramsey, who's introduced as more like the computer techie kind of girl who's introduced in Fury 7. We have Tesh, who is kind of like, he, he he's on the boots on the ground. He's a good driver, but he's also kind of more of the computer guy. We have Roman, who's like a good driver. He's kind of comic relief. And then we have, uh, that's basically our team. And then, of course, we got other supporting characters like... Um, in the movie, Mr. Nobody, played by Kurt Russell, and also his, like, like, his assistant, I want to say, played by Scott Eastwood, who is Clint Eastwood's son. So, obviously, in this movie, Clint Eastwood's son is kind of used, <laughs> Scott Eastwood's kind of used as a bit of a comic relief, but he's also served some purpose, and obviously, in this movie, we saw the return of Deckard Shaw and his brother, spoiler alert, Owen is back in this movie, who is the villain in Fast and Furious 6. But before I get into that, let's just talk about a couple of scenes I really enjoyed in this movie. So in one scene, after Vin Diesel betrays them, the rock gets compromised and goes to a jail, leading into his ultimate prison scene that we saw in the trailer. And was it as good? Yeah, it was pretty freaking awesome, guys. Now, if you guys want to see an awesome prison scene, you might want to go watch Prison Break, or you might want to go watch more of a realistic scene, where this is not that at all, where we actually see bullets like actually popping off of Vin Diesel, uh, no, of The Rock. Like, plastic bullets. It's rubber, but they're popping off of him. He's not even taking any damage. Which was kind of cool. It was over the top, obviously, where we actually see The Rock pick people up and throw them into other people. But, you know, when you go to the movies and you see a Fast and Furious movie, especially more of the recent iterations of the series, you want to see this stuff. So everybody was cheering when this stuff was going on. It was cool. And we also finally got to see the confrontation between him and Decker Shaw, who is like his mortal enemy and the villain of Furious 7. So it was kind of cool to see them bring back all their characters because for, uh, for the most part, the villains are kind of one and done. But I really like how they brought back the villains from the past few Fast and Furious movies and really connected the movie together. So we have other characters in this movie. I forgot what the guy's name is that he uh, raced in Cuba who kind of joins and helps them. And Helen Mirren's character, who is actually Decker Shaw and Owen Shaw's mom, who is kind of used for comic relief, but she's kind of like the one that sets it up because eventually we, it is revealed that they're working together with Dom and that they're actually the good guys who are going at their cipher because she betrayed them. It's really confusing, but it leads up to this awesome scene on a plane where basically, the I don't want to spoil, but the Deckard Shaw, Shaw is protecting somebody and basically, yeah, it's hilarious, basically. And yeah, so I the one thing is... um. This movie is definitely way over the top compared to the other Fast and Furious movies, but I really enjoyed it, guys, and I think you guys will, too. So, guys, I'm going to jump into, like, the heavy spoiler parts, and, yeah, so you've more on heavy spoilers here for Fate of the Furious. Let's just jump right into them, so I'll give you a second. So, yeah. So, basically, the main leverage that they have against Dom in this movie is that he actually has a son. So, earlier in the movie, we're talking about Letty's where, like, maybe, Dom, do you want to have a son, or do you just want to keep it where, like, we're just a couple? And basically, he's like not too sure, but that's right before he basically turns to the life of betrayal. But it's learned that his son is actually uh, Elena's son, who, if you guys didn't know, when everybody thought Lady died in Fast and Furious 5, kind of became Don's romantic interest. And she's kind of been a part of their team slash family, working with The Rock, basically. And yeah, so obviously she was kind of used as leverage along with her son. She obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but she is obvious the mother of his, his child so throughout the movie a lot of stuff happens and basically Decker's Shaw is sent to retrieve the child on the plane and yeah he does that leading into the awesome scene so that's kind of the main spoiler there obviously I didn't want to spoil the fact that Cypher does get away and at least the fact she might be the villain in a future Fast and Furious movie now is she gonna be the villain because they've already confirmed two more movies will they end it at 10 it would be interesting to see how far they can go past 10 movies um not many movie series go past 10 especially when there's no reboot or reset of characters like in Star Trek. So, what will happen after the 10th movie? I'm not sure. Will Cypher be the Fast and Furious 9 villain, or will she be the Fast and Furious 10 villain? Now, um, I'm really hoping she's not the Fast and Furious 9 villain, and it would kind of be cool if she could bring her back for, like, the 10th, or the possibly even farther movies in the, like, in the series. So, um, 9 would be kind of cool if we could have, like, a villain, maybe that's, like, from the past, kind of, like, 
um, maybe like something that Dom did in the past or something that the team did in the past caused this villain to rise or something like that. I think that would be a cool idea for a Fast and Furious movie. But, um, yeah, so it was also really cool at the end. They wind up his naming his baby Brian, which I thought was awesome. Whenever they announced that he was going to have a baby, um, or it was announced that he wanted to have a baby with Letty, I'm like, yeah, that baby's going to be named Brian. So it was very rewarding at the end of the movie when they do name the baby Brian. So it's kind of like, uh, just out of respect for Paul Walker, that they would do that and name it to his character. So, guys, overall, I thought Fast and Furious, or The Fate of the Furious, was a very good movie. It was obviously over-the-top action, but it was really enjoyable. And I really enjoyed it, and I could definitely see myself watching this again. Now, was this the best Fast and Furious movie? In my opinion, no. But some of you guys may think so. But overall, I think this was a decent, um, it's a pretty good installment to the Fast and Furious franchise. And, um, I'll give it... Out of 10, I'm going to give it like a 7.5 out of 10, guys. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this review, remember to give it a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.